Jerry Gunner said will no longer be the issue as part of the money realized at the party's fundraising dinner goes in for it. That the president as a candidate is entitled to raise his own campaign funds and is going to. The funds we raise are for the party and the party has so many projects and is the main one. It will be a building that demonstrates the solidity of this party and the capacity of our party to tool the people who will continue the stabilization of democracy in Nigeria. The present government uh, by Dr. Gudo Kribele Jonathan is ruling very well. You can see all the achievement of his transformation agenda and then he's really touching all the sectors of the economy. So I believe when Nigerians should rally around and support him so that he can consolidate on the achievement on ground. Minister of Water Resources Sarah Ochekwe and other members of the fundraising committee explain that the money raised is not for presidential campaign alone, but will also be deployed for other PDP projects. The PDP has an institute, and the whole purpose of setting up that institute is to train all members of the PDP, especially those in leadership position. Look at the railway is real, look at the Almagere, you have the Almagery all over, now they have school, they can come out educated, they can be leaders of tomorrow and they will. The government that has learned and lessons, the government that is growing, it's not a government that has not been fragmented. So you can be assured that for every, 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 every tenor, PDP keeps improving. The proposed building will have two basements for car park and a 300 seating capacity hall. Indications from the contractor is that 16.5 billion naira is needed to complete the project. In Abuja, Ajebola Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The senior special assistant to the president on youth and student martyrs, Comrade Judy Magwe, has enjoined Nigerian youth to shun all forms of violence during next month's general elections. Comrade Magwe stated this while student union leaders from the southeast geopolitical zones in Oka and Ambra State Capital. He urged you to not to be allowed to be used for thuggery, but to be politically active and vote for sustenance of the ongoing transformation in all key sectors of the economy. We should not allow any set of persons to lead us as agents of electoral distortion, agents of electoral violence, agents of cutting of viral bosses, of areas of disunity. Nigeria has been very well yesterday, and Nigeria is still in progress. Comrade Imagwe also paid homage to the OB of Oka, Igwe Gideongosu Eze Uzo II, where he called on the youths to be good ambassadors of the country. The youths and student union leaders who appreciated Mr. President's rejuvenation of the nation's economy pledged to mobilize support for the re-election of President Jonathan in the February general, general elections in 2015. President Gulag Jonathan's New Year get-together and town hall meeting with youth and student union leaders from from the South East Zone was organized by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Youth and Student Matters. Now, President Guluk Jonathan has joined other Nigerians to observe the first New Year 2015 Sunday service as he worshipped alongside with his family at St. Stephen's Anglican Church, Otueki, by Elsa State. President Jonathan reassured Nigerians that in spite of the challenges, the country will move forward and with prayers, better days are ahead for the country. Shagun Laoli in our report. It was the first Sunday in the year 2015 and a convenient Sunday in the Rakhidikan communion for worshippers who came before the Lord to re-establish and renew their convenient relationship with God while committing self into his hands in expectation of a greater year 2015. President Jonathan, while addressing the congregation, thanked the Church of God and religious leaders of all faiths for their relentless prayers for the sustenance of the country in the face of challenges which he noted the entire world is going through. Continue to pray to God with open hands. God will surely see us through. Yeah. I know this country has a lot of potentials. We have not reached where we want to go. We have not, it's, it's good as say we have not even started the journey, but we see a bright future for this country. And 
in spite of the challenges we have, the little uh, bombs and so on, the rest assured that Nigeria would move and Nigeria would be a great country. The summon of the diocesan bishop of Oguia Anglican Communion, Right Reverend James Oruwari, centered on renewing a covenant relationship with God for a successful year 2015. I have not seen anything that is too big for God to do. And what God will do at the beginning of time, before man will imagine it, he had already decided what will happen. This year, the greatest event we expect in this country is election. God has written his decision long ago. President Jonathan had earlier read the first lesson of the service, while the Governor Syriaki Dixon read the second lesson. <laughs> Prayers were also offered for the President and members of his administration for wisdom and guidance, for peace to reign in the land as the country goes into the 2015 general elections, President Jonathan has really returned to the State House. Shagulawali, NT News. And also 502 Nigerian Christian pilgrims to Israel have returned to Abuja. Adibola Brooksling Sander reports that the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission received them at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. The pilgrims are the last batch of the 2014 13,200 from 22 states of the country and the FCT. Addressing them shortly on arrival Sunday evening, Mr. John Kennedy Okpara believes that the nation will benefit immensely from their prayers offered while in the Holy Land. The Lord will use us to touch so many people that are going to come in contact with us. There will be good examples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preach peace wherever we go. And I can assure you, God willing, peace will suddenly return to Nigeria. Amen. We are going to overcome. Amen. Our election will be successful. Amen. And at the end of it all, all of us will give glory and honor to him. The pilgrims share their experiences. Thinking over there, Nigerian good people, great nation. And that is it. And 2015 shall be a very peaceful year. The election will come and go. Nigeria will remain. But we have prayed that we are going to wax stronger and grow better in development, transformation. Highest limit is our target. The spiritual impartation we received is something that is so amazing. It's something that I cannot explain. We have gone to sites and we have gone to places, you know, and I believe our, the spirit, our spiritual life has it's no longer the same. Did I pray for my nation in particular because uh, I have been experiencing a lot out of what has been happening to our nation. It's something that is like a burden to everyone. So I have to pray for my nation in particular. This batch has the highest number of self-sponsored pilgrims with no case of abscondment reported. In Abuja, Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide. We now link up with Lagos where Demola is standing by. Hello, Demola. And if you would, keep us up to date with, of course, resumption of work in Lagos and uh, latest happenings in that zone. Thank you, Rhoda. Good afternoon and welcome to Lagos. Workers in Lagos State resumed work today after the New Year's holiday. NT News monitored activities in the metropolis and reports that there is free flow of traffic on major roads in the state. It is the first day at work on the new year after the holiday against all expectations that there would be traffic jam on major roads in the state. Surprisingly, the roads are free of traffic gridlock. As early as 8 o'clock in the morning, workers and traders were arriving at their places of work and businesses. Some workers who spoke to NTA News expressed high hopes of better 2015. I've been putting some visions and goals aside, you know, to ensure that maybe all the mistakes of last year, we don't repeat it this year, and this year turned out to be the best of years. We rested for so long, 
I think uh, it's, it's, it's nine time to jail for another year. Um, we, are, we are thinking that we are going to start on a good note. Well, my expectation at, at uh, work is to put in my best and to be rewarded accordingly. The ever-busy business district of Lagos Island is gradually coming alive as some shops have opened for businesses. The Third Mainland Bridge, Outer Marina and Amadu Bello Way in Victoria Island are also free of traffic jam. It was smooth and easy, monitoring all the way. It is expected that both business activities and traffic situation will pick up in the state in the days ahead. Some residents of Lagos who traveled out of the metropolis to celebrate the Christmas and New Year with their loved ones have started returning to Lagos. Today, Saike reports that a visit to some motor parks in the city shows that it is another beehive of activities as some returning travelers are busy retrieving their luggages. At the Beggar bus stop, it was a busy day for commercial drivers and their conductors after a long distance journey. Some of the vehicles were parked on the road to discharge their passengers. The situation was the same at the Ojota Motor Park as some returning passengers told NTN News that their return journey was a pleasant one, except for the traffic jam along the way. During the traveling period, it was uh, hectic because uh, the transportation was very high. But coming back now, it wasn't like that again. They were very, very smooth. Uh, only except some hold up on the way, and we tried to avoid it, and it just came back. Between Shagamu downwards to Mowi, the Bafo. Then after Bafo, we have a free ride. So we thank God for it. They also said the increase in transport fare remains the same. Actually, before, the travel cost is too high, but now, because of the New Year stuff, Christmas stuff, the transport is 2,000 naira or 2,000, let us say 2,000 naira. The, the cost was well, we pay 5,000, some 6,000. From where to? From where to Lagos, 5,000, some 6,000. When you were going, was it the same thing? And when I was going, it was even more than that. We pay 7,000. As business activities begin to pick up, more residents of Lagos are expected back in the days ahead. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. With barely 40 days to the general elections, a lot of eligible voters are yet to collect their permanent voters' cards. This has become a big challenge to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The question being asked now is, will this sizable number of eligible voters be disenfranchised at the forthcoming elections? Olaji Debelo has an update on the distribution of permanent voters' cards in Lagos. Distribution of permanent voters' cards were carried out in two phases in Lagos State. The first phase covered 11 local government areas, while the second phase covered the remaining nine. After the two exercises, several registered voters complained about not collecting their permanent voters' cards. INEC, to this effect, directed those affected to go to its local government offices to collect them. INEC also directed the new eligible voters to also go to the local government offices for continuous voters' registration. Visits to some INEC offices in some local government areas revealed that, though a few people were seen, the distribution of PVCs is still ongoing. Some of the electorates speak on the distribution so far. We implore the authority that the remaining one that we are saying that is the line at Abuja, they should break it down for collection at the appropriate time. The, the man in charge here is telling me that they have cancelled and I can't have an access uh, to photo cards. So they want to disfranchise me. The first time I came, it was rowdy. Okay, because it was weekend. So you know, a lot of people, so I couldn't get mine that day. So I came back another day, which was work, uh, working day. So it was so easy. I just give them my the old ones and they, they, they search for it and they give it to me. INEC has called on affected voters to still go to its local government offices. In Lagos, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. Political will, rather than demonstration, will go a long way in solving the transportation challenges of the country. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola stated this while responding to questions on the traffic situation along Abapa axis of the state. Jesuton Moses reports that the governor emphasize the need for an effective rail system to provide a lasting solution. 
The government said a lot of efforts have been made to solve the traffic problems along the Azix. He disclosed that over 3,000 tankers and 1,000 trailers enter the port on a daily basis. According to him, effective rail system would be the only option to solve the problem. Speaking on the Lagos Oko Micro Rail project, the government said even though his administration will not finish the project, it will be test run before he leaves office. The train must run efficiently. I think it's going to be about 20 minutes from Okoko to Marina. So they must be on time, they must be on schedule. You can predict them by your watch. So signals have to be correct. That's the whole idea about developmental governance. It is not about what you will finish. It's about what you can begin and what you can plan. And that's how cities and nations should develop. Fasaba, however, noted that lack of enough policemen had hampered the enforcement of the law on the restriction of motorcycle operators on the highways at the state has only about 30,000 policemen to secure a population of over 20 million people in Lagos. Jesuta Moses, NTA News. Well, that does it from Lagos. It's back to Euroda for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Demola. Now, there are indications that the petroleum industry bill, PIB, may not be passed by the Seventh Assembly based on the number of days remaining before the expiration of their tenure in office. Guests on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria, while revisiting the PIB, says its passage is not in sight. Fimoti Yusuf now reports. The proposed petroleum industry bill, PIB, is a measure intended to reduce to the barest minimum federal government's exposure to oil and gas exploration and production through joint venture operations. The Vice Chairman, Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream, Senator Kabir Garba Marafa, says the bill is undergoing a rigorous legislative process. Uh, looking at the bill, it is before us. We are looking at it. We are the ones that knows it. Uh, one can see that the bill itself lacks internal internal uh, cohesion or harmony. Uh, some sections of the bill, you know, are against, you know, themselves or other sections. So when you are talking of a very important bill like that, now you have to look into uh, those aspects. Senator Lee Maiba, a former chairman, Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream, and Awal Musa Rafsanjani of the Civil Society submitted that this oil sector is characterized by stealing and corruption. The court for an independent oversight mechanism by the legislative organ. The issue first, the political issue of the the Naga that are getting too much money now. Mm. Secondly, the multinationals say, look, we are going to run away. The tax you are placing on us is the highest in the world. And and thirdly, people within the bureaucracy of NAPC who feel mm. this is very important, who feel that the bill is going to stiffen their hands. It's going to stop a lot of business as usual. It's going to be a bill that we, uh, that somebody was making a lot of money, but stop now. Don't make any money. The money belongs to Nigeria. Well, the, trans the lack of transparency, you know, in the oil and gas sector, you know, is what led us to, you know, uh, the kind of uh, outright looting and stealing you have in the sector. And that's why we are, you know, very much concerned that the transparency component, you know, must be properly embedded in the bill. And we've been advocating for that. Bala Zakai, petroleum engineer, called for an urgent passage of the bill, saying the gains are enormous. As long as this bill is not passed, right, knowing that oil and gas revenues constitute the oxygen of Nigerian economy, we are going to continually suffer. Because if you look at it, because this bill has not been passed, further exploration has stopped. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The year 2014 can be best described as the most productive in contemporary times in the tertiary education subsector, with the federal government's disbursement of huge funds to tertiary institutions. Frank Alzoma Olwa reports that the allocation to the sector increased from 230 billion naira in 2010 to almost 500 billion in 2014. Now the report. 
to be effective in their classrooms. And to ensure maximum results, the ministry strengthened the inspectorate department. The weekly assessment tour of ongoing projects in public institutions is designed to evaluate progress made so far. For my records, in the last three years of President Jonathan's um, presidency, the, the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Education and the Third Fund, has spent not less than 50 billion in Imo State. In all of this, the ministry remains resolute in its commitment to build world-class institutions with reputable class teachers, standard facilities, and knowledgeable graduates comparable to their counterparts internationally. In Abuja, Franka Uzoma Olua, NTA News. Vice President Namadi Sambo calls on Nigerians to intensify prayers for peace in the country as Governor Ramalan Yero meets with some supporters of the People's Democratic Party in Zango, Katab. And let's now join Suleiman for details of this story and, of course, more. Thank you very much, Rhoda, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. Vice President Muhammad Namadi Sambo has urged Nigerians to use the month of the birth of Holy Prophet Muhammad to promote peaceful coexistence, coexistence and religious tolerance in Nigeria. The Vice President stated this in a message to Idil Maulud lecture organized by Fitianul Islam, which took place at Ariwa House, Kaduna. Correspondent Ahmed Umar Kudang completes this report. Badiul Awal is a month in the Islamic calendar that Muslims annually celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The celebrations provide a platform for Muslims to know much about the Prophet as well as pray for peace and stability of Nigeria. Vice President Muhammad Namadu Sambo, represented by Senior Special Assistant to President on Islamic Affairs, Tahir Umar Tahir, called on the Islamic scholars to use the period to preach peace. The Vice President uh, urged the Muslim Muslim to emulate the teachings and practices of our uh, Muslim Allah alayhi wa sallam and to make sure that the peace will coexistence in this state and the country at large continue to thrive. Governor Mukutora Malanyeru used the forum to emphasize on the need for peaceful conduct of this year's elections, urging politicians to play politics with decorum. I would like to appeal to both the politicians and the electorate to please exercise patience and play the politics and then the election in such a manner that nobody loses his life or his property. Various scholars delivered lectures on the lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad. Within his neighborhood there were Christians of Banu Taglib. He revealed excellent human qualities towards them. He assisted them. There was never a time he set their places of worship ablaze. Chairman Fitiaro Islam, Kaduna State Chapter, Sheikh Khalifa Abul Adad Varya, said this year's celebration is no kid due to security challenges and urged Muslims to continue praying for peace. In Kaduna, Ahmad Umar Kudan, Antinus. Governor Mukhtar Ramalan of Kaduna State has called on the electorates to use their votes and elect credible candidates in this year's general elections. The governor, represented by his deputy, Nuhu Audu Bajuga, stated this during a meeting with members and supporters of the People's Democratic Party in Zongkwa, Zongwan Kataf, local government area of the state. The report. Though a visit the state governor traditionally paid the southern Kaduna people to wish them well during the new tide, discussions at the meeting with stakeholders and youths of the People's Democratic Party dwelt on plans to achieve victory and peaceful conduct of general elections in the area and Kaduna State in general. Deputy Governor of Kaduna State, Nuhu Audu Bajuga, who stood in for Governor Mukhtar Malayur, thanked members of the PDP in Southern Kaduna for their entire support to the party, promising to widen root inclusiveness in governance if re-elected in 2015. I will try to work with them. And if you look at all the programs we have had, I don't know what, we are targeting the youth more than any other person. And that has been the policy of this government. Other stakeholders at the meeting expressed commitment to the propagation of the ideas of PDP in the area. Meanwhile, the deputy governor convened a closed door meeting with traditional rulers in southern Kaduna. Deputy Chairman of Kaduna State Council of Traditional Rulers, Uvo Bonnet, briefed journalists on deliberations at the meeting. We 
also gave assurance of their support to a hitch free 2015 general elections. That's the much we can take from uh, Kaduna. And also, of course, uh, we sincerely apologize for the poor audio in that uh, report. Now to some more stories. Supervising Minister of Information, Dr. Nuruddin Mohammed, says the country's agricultural transformation agenda has guaranteed a 25 billion naira agriculture loan to farmers, a policy that has ensured increase in food production in the country. Anthony Forsing reports. Nigeria's agricultural transformation agenda under President Goodluck Jonathan has revolutionized agriculture in the country. From subsistence level, it has been elevated to full commercial enterprise through the exploration of the value chain with farmers ever than before now having access to credit facilities. Achievement in the subsector are facts that are in the public domain. The fall in the rate of inflation from double digit to single digit has been partly due to higher domestic production of food. The nation's food import bill has, has also reduced, placing Nigeria firmly on the path to food self-sufficiency. With priority based on the provision of improved quality seedlings, staple crop processing, and most heartwarming, the introduction of the e-wallet system for the purchase of inputs, which has equally eliminated racketeering in the fertilizer network. Access to portable water by Nigerians, the minister said, is another area the Jonathan-led administration has fared well by increasing access to water from 58% to 70 This has been made possible through the efforts of the three chairs of government together with development partners and the provision of water supply for the urban, small towns and rural settlements. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources completed 37 dams of various sizes rehabilitated 10 more dams, while the construction works on 149 dams of various capacities are ongoing across the country. The federal government, he said, is currently pursuing with vigor ongoing water projects across the country. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. We'll take a break now, and of course, plenty to come when Nationwide returns. Happy New Year 2015. Visualize it. Believe this former. Vote Good Luck Jonathan and Number Disambo for President and Vice President 2015. Vote PDP. Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria supporting PDP for Good Luck and Sambo 2015. 2013, John Obi Mikel of Chelsea Football Club and Super Eagles midfielder was crowned Nigeria's King of the Pitch and His Excellency Senator Leo Imoke, CON, Football Friendly Governor of the Year. Who will be Nigeria's King of Football, Matchmakers Consort International and Nigerian Television Authority. NTA presents the Nigerian Pitch Awards 2014 and its Night of Honor. Who will dethrone Vincent Iyama as goalkeeper of the year? Can Emmanuel Emeneke remain Nigeria's striker of the year? We can Pillars remain Nigeria's best club side? In 2013, you voted Super Eagles coach Steven Kesh as coach of the year. Tony Ibitoye, Football Journalist of the Year TV. Ade Ojekere, Football Journalist of the Year Print. Pimbo Adeola, Football Journalist of the Year Radio. Chief Felix Anyasi, Manager of the Year. Guinness Nigeria PSC, Best Cup Responsor of Football of the Year. And Lagos State, a state with the best grassroots football development program nigeria peach awards nigeria's own football award the nigerian television authority nta wishes to remind representatives of all registered political parties of the crucial meeting to present nta's political coverage policies and plan ahead of 2015 general elections dead tuesday january 6 2015 Venue NTA headquarters, Damsat area 11, Gariki, Abuja. Time 12 noon prompt. Announcer Shola Atiri, Executive Director News NTA.
Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. Change is never easy. It was not easy for Dr. Martin Luther King when Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew transformed Singapore from third world to first world. It was not easy. They stoned him. It was not easy for Nelson Mandela. I, Barack Hussein Obama. It was not easy for Barack Obama. Nothing worthwhile ever is. Dr. Martin Luther King did it. Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew did it. Nelson Mandela did it. Barack Obama did it. Good luck, Jonathan, is doing it. He is transforming Nigeria. Mr. President, keep doing it. We who are with you are so many more than those who are against you. A message from protectors of Nigerian posterity. Nigeria is a canvas of untold stories, human stories, Stories about environment and account of events. Stories that rarely grace the TV screen. Fresh and engaging. What better way to tell those stories? My paddling is failing me. Who better tells those stories? And when they move, their movement is total. Rogo at large. Unique, eye-opening and engaging. Rogo at large. Airs first quarter 2015 on NTA Network. Shopee has ensured the reconstruction of the Abuja Lokoja Road and the East West Road in Port Harcourt. The standard gauge rail tracks from Abuja to Kaduna and Lagos to Kanu indicate that our trains are coming back. The second Niger Bridge in the Southeast and the local Oweto Bridge in the North Central are in progress thanks to Shopee. Shopee's mass transit program has made transportation easier for Nigerians. Shopee has rehabilitated over 1,000 health centers across Nigeria. Shopee has provided mama kits to pregnant women and polio is on the verge of eradication. Shopee has also ensured the provision of social amenities and through its various training programs for young people guarantees a better future. Shopee, delivering service with integrity. and a prosperous new year. Moving Nigeria forward in 2015 is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live. Tuesday Live, setting the agenda for a better Nigeria. It will be incisive, objective, informative and educative. Don't miss it. Join us. You're still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA and now turning our attention again to education in his determination to ensure academic excellence and give education sector a pride of place. Ondo State Governor Olusegun Mimiko says government will continue to properly fund the sector. The governor said this while commissioning the newly constructed Senate building of the Adekunle Adjacent University. Akoko Doris Olumokoko reports. The governor, Dr. Olusha Gumimiko, commissioned the 500 capacity Nelson Mandela Lecture Theater and the Library Resource Center before proceeding to commission the Senate building, all funded by the state government. Dr. Mimiko said 
The institution was in deficit of infrastructure when its administration came on board, hence his deliberate attempt to turn around the physical and academic outlook of the Citadel of Learning. The determination of the university will be able to ensure that the products of this university and indeed all the pressure in the sense of learning are globally competitive in the United States, which of course will form a commitment to the good funding of the and other public institutions. Outgoing Vice Chancellor of the School, Professor Ulufemi Mimiko, said, the AAUA Senate building is the most functional and aesthetically pleasing of its kind in the nation's university system today. This is an that for all its purposes defines the modern AAUA. It is a well ventilated five story complex radiating from a large culture. The National Association of Nigerian Students, Zone D, Southwest Nigeria, presented Governor Mimiko with the Education Icon Award while a certificate of recognition was presented to the outgoing Vice Chancellor, Professor Femi Mimiko. The students pledged their support for President Gula Jonathan in the forthcoming presidential election. From Akungba Akuku, Doris Ulumoko, NTA News. And also, Ondo State Governor Dr. Lushago Mimiko says he is optimistic that the year 2015 will usher in good tiding for Nigeria and peace will reign supreme. The governor was speaking at the end-of-year children's party organized by his wife, Olukemi, where he assured of continuity in all government projects. Doris Olumoko has details. The governor, Dr. Olusha Gumimiko, who had a brief stopover at the party to felicitate with children and women of the state, said, the policy focus of government, which emphasizes the importance of women, will continue to have a pride of place in its administration. All the time, all of you inspired the women for your quantifiable support for this administration. And the grace of God we will continue as we are going to do and we love you program for women in the future. Wife of the governor, Mrs. Olukemi Mimiko, said the Children's Party is organized annually to show appreciation to God and felicitate with children who are gifts from God. At the end of the year, we celebrate them and we celebrate ourselves, particularly us mothers. You see, we have more mothers here than fathers. To say thank you to God, thank you to government, and thank you to one another for the support that we have given and received. For various gifts that we have given and received, but more importantly, for the mercy and the goodness of God that we have received. The children, no doubt, had a fun field day as they participated in various activities. Now, for more reports on Nationwide, we now join our Benin Network Center, where Ogo Chukoka is standing by. Hello, Ogo. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Rhoda. Good to see you too. Welcome to Benin. An interagency committee on election security has met with other stakeholders in Asaba Delta State to brainstorm on ways to ensure violence free 2015 elections. The two day workshop considered in particular the roles of stakeholders and the way forward. Stakeholders at the forum noted that youths form the major instruments of election violence and advised that severe punishments for offenders is a solution. They also suggest that the judiciary should be up and doing, political offices made less attractive, and police officers adequately sensitized before elections. They are also of the view that women should serve as mediators and agents of change and give maximum support to security agencies and INEC. If the political parties agree to play by the rules, every election should be free and fair. Political parties have since begun the process of selecting their candidates through primaries. Campaigns will commence this year. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a step in the right direction as holding free fair and credible election in Nigeria has been the hard cry of all well-meaning citizens of this country. The stage is already set as a commission 
all hands are on deck. The organizers also say ensuring free, fair and credible elections in the country is a collective responsibility. Edo State chapter of the People's Democratic Party has distributed bags of rice to widows in the state. Edo State PDP Chairman Chief Dan Obi said the gesture is part of the transformation agenda of President Goodluck Jonathan to put smiles on the faces of widows this festive season. Bukola Oguns has details. Dan Obi thanked other people for their tolerance. He said the PDP is prepared to change the face of politics in the state if given the mandate. We have already started the process of showing them that we love them and we appreciate what they are going through. The PDP Edo South Senatorial candidate, Mr. Matu Uwede, said the gesture is not just to convert support for President Jonathan and the PDP but also to demonstrate love to the widows. The expression on the faces of the beneficiaries was that of excitement and jubilation, as they wish the president success in the forthcoming election. As we will you not know, get a husband, say me we chop with our people, and I go go be with them. I go go let them win. Hey, I feel fine, I feel fine, I feel fine. The gesture by the PDP to ensure that widows in the state are given a sense of belonging started last year in Benin. Bukola Ogun's NTN News. Women and children have been hosted to a New Year party by the Edo State Government. Wife of the Deputy Governor, Nigerians Odubu, told the women to continue to bring up their children to be responsible citizens of the country. Lawrence Okoje reports. Organized to put smiles on the faces of Edo children and women. Wife of the Deputy Governor, Nigerians Odubu, said... The Get Together Party is an avenue for government to celebrate with citizens. She used the opportunity to advise parents to bring up their children in the fear of God and warn the youth against violence during the general election. These are events, an annual event designed by the government to appreciate our consensual mothers and wonderful children for the support of the government in keeping our respective homes united. Children and the women danced with the wife of the deputy governor. <laughs> Gifts were presented to the best dancers. The children and the women said they are happy to experience the celebration. I want to thank the state governor for organizing this kind of party for us. And God bless the comic governor for making us see such children party like this. Father Christmas passed the occasion with the distribution of gifts to those present in Benin. Lawrence Okuji, NTA News. And that's our contribution from this end, Rhoda. It's back to you for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Ogo. Now it's New Year and mankind is able to keep a record of dates and history with the use of calendar. The Georgian calendar, also called the Christian calendar, has 12 months and is the most commonly used across the world. The question is, what is the origin and how did it become widely accepted globally? Correspondent Mitari Iqben gives us insight to these questions. Also called the Western or Christian calendar consists of 365 or 366 days divided into 12 months to make a year. Research reveals that the Gregorian calendar is named after Pope Gregory XIII, who introduced it in February 1582 with the aim of correcting a miscalculation of the Julian calendar of the Roman Empire, which was previously in use. The Roman government never calculated, the emperors never calculated the movement of the sun around the earth properly, and it was always 11 minutes miscalculated. And as the years went by, it was falling far and far away from the Easter season. And so the Pope foresaw a situation where maybe much later we'll be celebrating Easter around December 24th and then Christmas December 25th. And with all of that, he had to step in to moderate that so that the church's ecclesiastical year fall at its proper time. It was first implemented by the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar in 46 BC. 
The few countries that do not use the Gregorian calendar include Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Nepal, Iran, and Afghanistan. Some of these countries use alternate calendars such as the Islamic calendar and Ethiopian calendar, which were retained to depict religious or astrological events, but however run concurrently with the Gregorian calendar for various reasons, including convenience and international trade. Why is the Gregorian calendar widely accepted? One of the reasons that advanced the fast spread and acceptance of that calendar is the spread of Christianity. And then the second year, the, so the second reason, the desire for unity in the world. We, we all know day by day the world is becoming a global village. Also of interest is the fact that the months of the Gregorian calendar are named after Roman gods and emperors or coined from Latin words. January is named after Janus, the two-faced Roman god of gates or beginnings, renowned for seeing the future and the past. February is coined from the Latin word febru, meaning to purify, and originally the Roman month of sacrifices and purification. March is named after Mars, the Roman god of war. April is from the Latin word aperio, meaning open, the month when trees bring out new leaves. May got its name from Maya, the Roman goddess of growth, while June is named after Juno, perceived as queen of a Roman god. July is named after Julius Caesar, the famous Roman emperor. Same with August, named after the first Roman emperor, Augustus Caesar. September is from the Latin word septem, meaning seven, and originally the seventh Roman month. October is coined from the Latin word octo, meaning eight. November is also from the Latin word novem, meaning nine, as well as December, from the Latin word decem, meaning ten, and previously the Roman 10th month counting from March. These months we are not rejected but Christianized and today there is nothing absolutely with those months. When I'm saying I'm in January, I don't think I'm worshipping a Roman goddess. Enjoy a happy new year. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Mm. Thank you, Mitairi, for educating us there. Quite uh, really enlightening. Now, talking sports, Super Eagles prepare for international friendly by beating NYC in Abuja as USA beats Italy in Hopman Cup. Amanzi Marcus has that on sports update. It seems sports there is not ready, but we'll bring you that in our subsequent bulletin. And that concludes Nationwide today. And, uh, but just before we go, remember, it is your right to challenge anybody suspected to be involved in an awesome activities around you. Be security conscious. This message is from the Directorate of State Security. Thank you for watching and of course uh, join us again at 7 and 9 p.m. for the Network News. Thank you for watching. I'm Rhoda Abo. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Because we are here.